Okay, so I want to show you how to uh, put a discussion board post up online. Um, and I also want to show you a few of the little features um, that Canvas has that might make your work more interesting, fun, enjoyable, etc. cetera. Um, so let me move over to the student view so you can kind of see what this looks like from a student's view. Um, this is not something you can do, but it just, you know, gives me a better sense of what you see. Um, ignore all of the stuff over here on the right hand side. This test student has not done any of his work. <laughs> um, all right. So um, I want to go to our course calendar, which is here. Okay. And I can see that I have this discussion board post uh, assignment that is due on 319. So I'm going to click into that and I'm going to read through it. Okay, that's always the first thing, of course, you should do when uh, faced with a discussion board prompt. Okay, so what I'm asking you to do is a 250 word post in which you respond to the prompt and then include a question of your own as part of your 250 word post. Okay. Uh, and that should be a general question that you have about the materials that you've just looked at and written about. Okay. Um, and then for later, about a hundred word um, reply in um, response to one of your peers' questions. So remember that's due the 20th, um, but your actual original post and question are due on the 19th. Okay, so here's my prompt. Um, you've looked at a bunch of different online versions of Blake, okay, and you've also looked more critically at your own vintage edition and you've read those poems on the Blake archive and so on over spring break. So what I'm asking you to do is in a 250 word post, um, sort of critically describe your own reading experiences with two of the texts from this list, okay? Um, in general, you wanna think about that next assignment, right? Which of these is gonna make the best text for classroom use? Now, keep in mind that um, you know, there's certain things you need to be able to do when you're studying or writing about a text, right? You need to know that it's accurate, you need to be able to cite it, and ideally you want to learn something legitimate about it while still being able to form your own opinions. Um, you know, you might want to write on it or take notes and so on. There are lots of different things that you might want to do as a reader, okay? So you're going to choose two of these texts, okay, and you're going to um, describe your reading experiences. Here are some questions that might guide your reflections, okay? Um, they're not exhaustive, but they give you a place to start, okay? Um, what features of each text are really noticeable? Uh, how do these texts require you to read differently? Do you have to scroll one way or do you have to click in a different way? Uh, do you have to turn some feature on? Uh, do you have to ignore a bunch of flashing ads? What do you have to do um, differently? What aspects of the text made reading easier for you or harder for you, right? And why? What was surprising to you when you kind of compare these different texts? Uh, which in general do you think is most helpful for student readers and why? And remember to keep in mind that, that you're going to need to be able to do things when you're studying um, a text or you're writing about it for, say, a college literature class, okay? So that's the prompt, okay? When you want to reply to it, the only thing you need to do is click this big reply button, okay? And that will open up a window down here, okay? Now I've already drafted a sample response, so let me go and grab that um, real quick. Um, all right, so here it is. I didn't put my question in here, and this is actually, you know, 466 words, so it's a little too long, but I, I kind of got into it, right? <laughs> uh, so anyway, I'm gonna write my post, okay? Um, and one of the things I want you to note is that, um, you can actually add images here, okay? So let's say that you wanted to point out this header stuff, okay, from the Project Gutenberg site, okay? I went and I just took a screenshot of it, and what I can do is I can actually add that into my post. I can embed an image, right? Um, and to do that, you go to Canvas, and you're gonna have to upload the file to Canvas before you can use it, okay? So you can put it here in your files, uh, and you can 
upload, click upload file to select your screenshot, okay? Um, and then you can give it an alt text, um, which is a good idea, but you know, not necessary um, as we don't, as far as I know, have any um, visually impaired um, readers in this class. Um, I'm gonna also make it a little bit smaller just so it fits, right? And I only had to do one because it's got an aspect ratio. So if you just type in a smaller number here, it'll change it over here and keep the aspect ratio. I'm gonna click update and then it's gonna stick it in here, okay? So now I might have, you know, talked about that in my, in my response and I wanted to give you an illustration of it, okay? The other thing um, that I just wanted to show you, okay, is that you've got all sorts of things up here, right? Bold, italic, etc. all of these different things, right? So you can format your text in all sorts of different ways. You can, as I've shown you, add an image. You can also add media, like a YouTube video, okay? The other cool thing that you can do is you can actually record media right on the fly, okay? So you click that button that says record media, and then hello, <laughs> there I am talking to you. Um, and all you do is you click start recording, um, and then it'll allow you to upload that to Canvas, okay? Um, I'm not gonna do that, but that's how you would do that, okay, if you wanted to. Um, okay, so that's how you write a reply. You might add a few you know, images or whatever you wanted to to that. You click post reply to make it accessible, okay? Now, remember, one of the other things you're gonna have to do is answer one of your peers' questions, okay? Now to do that, what you need to do is go to your peers' post, find one that has an interesting question you wanna answer, and then you click reply to that post, okay? So there's this reply button, and then there's this big reply button. This big reply button makes your, your, your first post, okay? And then if you wanna reply to this test student, you click reply just to that post, okay? And that will open up another box down here and here's where you answer the question. This creates what's called a threaded reply, okay? And then you click post reply. Notice that it will tell you how many words you've got down here as well. It also lets you attach things. Um, and again, you can directly embed things here, okay? All right. Uh, and then that appears here. Um, now, if you're the next person, um, you would uh, click reply to make your main post. And then again, you might want to reply to this post or to somebody else's post, um, but it should be pretty, pretty straightforward, okay? Um, so that's how you create a discussion board post. Um, when you do create your discussion board post, remember that it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be written in formal prose style, right? Um, but uh, you do want to make sure that it's been, you know, generally spell checked and that, and that you know, your peers can understand what it is you're saying, um, you know, in a pretty accessible way, okay? Um, so it doesn't have to be written in formal prose style, uh, but it should be um, appropriate to the, the, the purpose, okay? So I think that's it. Um, if you have any questions, of course, reach out and um, happy posting. Thanks.